All right, well, uh, thanks everyone for being here, and thanks, Doug, for the invitation to come back again this year. This is one of the highlights of, of my year, at least, is to come give a talk at this um, professional development seminar in Bozeman. So my name is Kevin Hammonds. I'm uh, Assistant Professor of Civil Engineering at MSU, and I also recently just started running the Sub-Zero Research Laboratory uh, as well, uh, since Ed Adams has retired after a fantastic career. So what I'm going to talk about today is just give you a little bit of an update of what is going on in the lab right now in terms of some of my projects and who are some of the new people that we have coming on. And also I'm going to introduce a couple of uh, other folks from the Sub-Zero Research Lab, one of my colleagues, Dr. Chris Borstad, and uh, grad student Chris Donahue that are going to give you some more detailed, um, I guess, information about some of the research projects they have going on. So for starters, uh, what's new in the Sub-Zero Research Lab? One, it's officially now the Sub-Zero Research Laboratory. I don't know if that was a thing last year or not, but we used to be the Sub-Zero Research or Science and Engineering Research Facility, which you know, didn't quite roll off the tongue as, as we wanted to. So now we're the Sub-Zero Research Lab, so when you just call us the Sub-Zero Lab, that's actually correct. So that's um, been going pretty well. Also, uh, I shaved my beard since I was here last year. So I am the same guy that was here last year. Uh, and I'm going to touch on one of those talks I gave last year. Uh, it's been a couple years. We went to Hawaii for spring break. I wanted to have my face melt off, which it did. It was awesome. Um, so anyways, I'm all cleaned up. So I'm going to talk about a few of the projects I'm most excited to have going on in the lab right now. One related to uh, LIDAR systems in the lab. Um, also sulfuric acid and its effects on snow and uh, an upcoming project we have related to ice mechanics up in Highlight Canyon for um, you know, ice climbing purposes, which I'm pretty excited about as well. But before I get into that, I'd just like to introduce to you some of the new faces that we have in the lab. This is one of the things I'm most excited about in, in our laboratory space right now is just some of the, the influx of, of new and fresh blood. So I'm going to introduce Chris Borstad here in a minute. But he's our new civil engineering uh, snow mechanics faculty. Great addition to our, our team. I'll talk to more about him in a little bit. We've got a couple new faces in mechanical engineering that are both maybe not doing avalanche research per se, but what they, the, the research they are working on has overlap with us in the lab so that we're able to sort of utilize their expertise and skill sets in, in developing new instrumentation or doing new testing in the lab. Uh, Sean Yaw from Computer Science, he's really interested in helping us uh, develop more user-friendly interfaces for, say, downloading LiDAR data and looking at it, uh, maybe doing some digital image processing work, things like that, that uh, he has a great skill set for. And Colin Shaw has been around for a while over in Earth Sciences, and he's studying uh, specifically the Rock Glacier up in Lone Peak Cirque and sort of how it's moving and uh, tracking that over time. So for those of you that don't know, there's a glacier under the tram at Lone Peak Cirque, and it, and it moves, apparently. So uh, he's looking into that. And then I'm really excited about these three new grad students. We have Chris Donahue, who's here, James Dillon, who couldn't make it this morning, and uh, Sam for Plank, who's also here. Uh, these guys are all, I think, going to do great work and have a lot of uh, interesting talks, you know, one today and then others in the future about what they're working on with their respective projects. So really excited about all the new um, people coming into the lab that you'll hopefully get to know well and see more great work from in the future. We've also been getting a fair amount of media lately. We were just recently, uh, I think a lot of this stems from updating our website, kind of similar to uh, and a little bit more outreach, similar to uh, what A3 is doing now as well. So we were just recently featured on National Geographic, the BBC, NBC Montana. We've had a couple stories in the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. That's all been great. But I have to say there's nothing better f as far as outreach goes than uh, getting emails like this from, from locals around Bozeman. So this is uh, seventh grade. Uh, seventh grade science teacher Sarah Tabor from Belgrade Middle School who was out on the Madison River and her son just started hitting this piece of ice on the side of the river and he was triggering these little fractures in the ice. You can kind of see him just sort of spider web around in the ice. I think it's fascinating, one. Two, and, I, and I'm so grateful that she sent this to me and just wanted to know what's going on here? Can you explain you know, what's happening? My explanation is that we've got a uh, fracture occurring around these grain boundaries in the ice. Um, ice is typically a very strong material, so how he's triggering this just by slapping it with his hand. You know, there's something going on there that I think is worth studying, or, or worth understanding at least, that I, I think is, is really cool. So that's been the best thing to show up in my inbox lately, and it's from, I think, some of our increased outreach on behalf of the lab. 
So moving on to a few of the projects that um, I'm excited to talk about and excited to get going. One, we just got word we're going to be getting funding from the Transportation Avalanche Research Pool to do a project where we intend to develop real-time data processing and analytics for avalanche forecasting purposes using uh, a LiDAR system developed locally at Blackmore Analytics. So the idea here, it's a three-phase project basically, where we want to first start off in, in the lab by bringing the LiDAR system into the lab, looking at lots of different types of snow from different angles um, and, uh, and different types of um, layers within the snow as well, and try and, and go from figuring out the, what the limitations are of the LiDAR system to be able to move it out into the field and have this thing uh, mounted on a mobile unit such that as a forecaster you can just drive around with this LiDAR system mounted to your truck, you point it at a starting zone, and then in real time uh, you have you know, your laptop sitting with you in the, in the cab of the truck. You're able to just look at that data come across and ma maybe that will help you make some decisions. And we're also trying to get sort of the, the gist of this project is terrestrial scanning LiDAR for avalanche forecasting beyond snow depth. Jeff Deems has done fantastic work and a fantastic job showing what you can do to help um, in increase, I guess, people's ability to make decisions related to avalanche forecasting and avalanche mitigation uh, from studying snow depth with LiDAR, but we'd like to get to the next step, which I think is gonna be, with this particular LiDAR system, be able to track things like precipitation rate, as well as, we hope, snow stiffness, and uh, also the slope, slope angle all showing up in real time right in front of you. Uh, on this mobile platform. So this is from the lab to the field and then to the future. So I've got a picture of Doug Richmond here because one of the first folks that I met when I moved to Bozeman and you know he found out I was working at MSU and he told me he wants two things. One, a hexagonal resonator. Has anyone heard this talk before? <laughs> a, a different way to trigger avalanches, you know, something else we could do besides explosives. I'm not sure what to do about that yet. But the other thing they wanted was stability goggles. Right? He wants to be able to just go out into the field and with these goggles be able to see like, where the snow is basically. And at the time that sounded really crazy. But now with, with you know, virtual reality, augmented reality, and you know, the potential of being able to get more information out of LiDAR systems that can also be statically mounted up at your ski resorts and things like that, that doesn't sound so crazy anymore. To where maybe you put on these glasses that give you augmented reality, you go run your route and you can look around and have an overlay of you know, where is all the new snow and how stiff is it. You know, it's not that crazy anymore. So we might very well get his stability goggles one of these days and, and I, I hope that we're a part of it as the, the lab at MSU. So that's it for uh, that project that's just getting fired up right now. Uh, last year, if you remember, I talked about the effects of sulfuric acid on ice. Uh, does anyone remember the result from that? What does sulfuric acid do to the ice? It weakens it. You know, it weakens its mechanical uh, strength, basically, its mechanical properties, just by trace amounts. So we continued to look into that. This is the result from that study that I showed last year where we stretched ice, we crushed ice, we just put this tiny amount of sulfuric acid in there and we saw some pretty different results based on uh, the sulfuric acid being present in the ice. So we did extend that, uh, Chris Donio in particular extended that to some studies on snow where we did compression tests on snow that had been allowed to center for you know, up to uh, a couple days and we saw similar result actually. So where we got a, a weakening of the snow. So if this is strain and uh, stress on this axis, we saw a weakening of the snow that was doped with only 50 parts per million of sulfuric acid. I think this is kind of an exciting result because it really opens the door to all the other natural impurities that are in our uh, precipitation events and end up in our snowpacks. What kind of effect do, do they have? I think it's um, worth studying and it might be, for all we know, responsible for some of these sort of difficult to forecast avalanche events that we see. Uh, another avenue to be going down in terms of avalanche research. Um, last, the, th this last project that I'm also pretty excited about and also just getting started is related to temperature swings versus tool swings. So this is kind of not so much avalanche related but ice climbing related. And uh, on the left here there's a picture of Pat Callis climbing uh, up in Highlight Canyon basically just making us all look bad. And on the right is a, a picture of a similar flow outside of Chamonix in two different years. So on the left, there's this free hand, this uh, freestanding pillar. And in this series, this is in January 2008, this thing just uh, fell down basically in the middle of winter right after it had been climbed. 
uh, for no apparent reason that people could really figure out. And then in another year, it was March 2009 when it came down a little bit more predictably. In the spring, things had warmed up. You know, you got the cracking that started and eventually it fell down. So what, what's going on here is the question. There's only been one study. This study was done by uh, a French group, actually, that looked into the mechanics and behind how temperature variations can have dramatic, or dramatic effects on uh, ice mechanics and stability. So we'd like to study that here in Highlight Canyon, too. And we intend to do it two ways. One, we're going to do what we do in the lab. So we're going to um, make ice in the lab as well as bring ice back from the field into the lab to do some uh, testing with this summer. So this is Mike Dvorak, an undergrad that's working with me on this project. We were just up uh, at Bingo World the other day, cutting out these, these pretty massive chunks of ice, somehow wiggling them into these haul bags and bringing them back to the lab so that we can um, put a pressure transducer in there and you know, take them through these wild temperature fluctuations like we, we get sometimes in Highlight Canyon and see how that affects the, the internal stresses of the ice which is what uh, that French team kind of found was, was leading up to these unpredictable uh, ice column failures. It was kind of these, these really dramatic temperature swings. So we intend to, to make some ice blocks as well to study that and bring ice um, samples back from the field to study that in the lab. And then next winter, our intention is to have this system, once we get it all dialed, have it, uh, you know, have a couple of ice flows out there in the field instrumented for the whole winter season so that we can really link up uh, what's happening with thermal stresses related to temperature and other atmospheric phenomenon. So that's it for me. Uh, as, a, as a reminder, you guys are always all welcome to come visit the lab, especially any of you that are here from out of town. If you can swing by today or tomorrow, I'm sure we could find a time to uh, give you a tour of our facility. And we're always, um, we're always into you know, external collaborations with other people and academics or practitioners as well. Uh, to come into the lab and, and uh, help us figure out what would be the next project that we should be working on or next experiment that we could run that could help out with avalanche forecasting. So um, thanks for your attention. Um, get in touch with us if you're interested in coming to visit.